there! Welcome to a new video! I was going through some pictures and videos and everything that I found in my old backups and computers and then I came across this footage of me and my mom baking cookies. These are mint cookies as you're about to see and I'll definitely leave the recipe on the description box below in case you want to try them out. They're very very soft as you're about to see and very green I guess. <laughs> I love, love, love mint flavor stuff. I always have. It's so funny to me that the world seems to be like divided in people that love mint flavored things and people that hate it because they think it tastes like toothpaste, which, well, I get it. Most toothpastes are mint flavored, so that's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about it. But at the same time, I think it's so disrespectful to the mint cookies and mint ice cream and whatever else there is so i decided to come up with a sticker sheet oh no i have to stop everything just look at that hmm. so beautiful it's super soft i'm sure even if you don't if even if you're not such a fan of mint i swear you're gonna enjoy these cookies just because they're so soft and so smooth and it's just uh Okay, so I decided to pay like a tribute homage to my mint cookies and design slash draw a sticker sheet entirely dedicated to cookies. And because I want to be all inclusive, of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna have room for everybody. But yeah, I would love to know your favorite. Please tell me I'm all about cookies and I'll definitely take cookie recipes. That actually reminds me of something. Um, there is this book that I really, really love called You Are Not So Smart by David McRaney. This book changed my life completely. Like I love um, learning about the brain and about our self-delusions, our self-illusions, both. And uh, like biases and tendencies and heuristics and all sorts of things that happen in our everyday lives and I think it's so useful to know about these things and it actually applies to so many parts of our lives so yes yeah, I'm talking about this book because I read this book like I think four years ago for the first time four or five years ago and then I didn't know that it had a podcast as well like the author has a podcast where he discusses kind of like every chapter of the book he has somebody to comment on it like a collaborator and uh okay so the funny part is that he will have somebody over for the episode of the podcast and by the end of it he answers questions from a fan <laughs> but the way he does it is he requested cookie recipes on his website i think or in his blog something like that so whatever cookie grabs his attentions of like originality and I guess imagining how good it would taste like, I think. I don't know what, what are the criteria for that, but um, he picks one cookie recipe, makes the cookies, and he'll basically eat the cookie while answering the questions, which is so unusual and like I've never heard anything like that. And it's so like, oh my god. A book that I love with cookies, which I also love very much. Two worlds colliding, it's great. <laughs> Anyways, I am not gonna eat cookies today while I draw these, but I wish. Yeah. Honestly, I feel a little bad every time I eat cookies because yeah, they're delicious, but at the same time, you're basically eating lots of sugar and butter and well, we all know how bad that is. But fortunately nowadays it's so easy to find alternate recipes and, and other options with other ingredients, which is great. I'm also very thankful to my mom because she was always the person like looking for healthy alternatives to things that we actually like. And she was always very good with presenting new things for us growing up. Especially later on in life, she used to volunteer for this school. She was in charge of baking snacks for the children. And uh, because it was for so many people, she had to make sure that that was gonna fit everybody. 
like uh, it would be gluten free and dairy free and not many ingredients so it wouldn't cause allergies to people and of course not a lot of sugar nor salt because you never know which kids have um, tendencies because you never know and from that she discovered Pinterest and so many amazing recipes from people who were just like sharing stuff and she went on a whole journey of like uh, finding ways to present a cute meals and snacks that are still healthy and um, taste great because well that's very important right <laughs> So yeah, I always have great memories of baking with my mom, even though we didn't do it like every weekend or anything like that. But I would always be around her doing these kind of things and it inspires me to just look out for something else. Just because, for example, living here in North America, it, there is a lot of prepackaged stuff, including cookie dough that I didn't have growing up. I didn't I didn't know that existed. Maybe it even does right now because things are getting more popular. But that was not a thing, so we had to look up for our own ways of doing it. And sometimes that came with very very simple alternatives. For example, my favorite cookies actually are not chocolate cookies or anything like that. They're simply banana and oatmeal cookies. You literally just smash a banana how do how do you call that mash mash mashed bananas and then you make like a paste of bananas and then you just throw oatmeal until you have like a great consistency and uh, and then you spread it on your tray however you want or or you just portion them into cookies and then you bake for I don't remember how long but it, it's just great like you just you could just google oatmeal banana cookies and this, these are actually my favorites. You don't need anything else. And I believe these are the greatest recipes. Like two ingredients, three ingredients and nothing else. Like completely simple. Okay, that's enough about food and cookies and baking and all that. Now to my drawing process. I sketched digitally on Procreate a little bit of personalities for my cookies and I had lots of fun actually building these like little characters. I don't usually do that to be honest. I, uh, I, I don't really explore lots of things in one design but I'm trying to change that because I think it, it means a lot for your designs and you have so much fun and then you, you figure things out in the process and then you try out so many things and that's what I wanted to do with this cookie sheet and I really 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 enjoy the process. After that I went to paint them, also on Procreate as you see, and I'm doing it like a color pencil style. Usually I'll, I'll use a brush with a pencil texture and just like have it medium sized that covers a lot of the design already. And then I just go over it, it actually it's super quick. But this time I decided to go very small and just um, color it slowly, slowly, like you would with an actual pencil in real life with a medium, slightly bigger drawing. I think it gives a whole other look to it. I'm not sure I'm going to continue with this. I just love experimenting so much and I think you discover great things, but not always you're going to stick to that. It's all about trying things out and then someday you might actually bump into something that you really really love so much that you don't even you don't even think anymore you just keep doing it until you find something else and <laughs> I guess that's the fun in having a journey of a long-term thing you discover so many small things on the way and that's what keeps you going for this design I'm also trying three different print settings you have like the print settings and then you can manage the colors or adjust the colors within the printer itself without you using Photoshop or anything. Because before I used to just have a set of adjustments, for example, I would change the hue to a more warmer tone because my printer tends to print things slightly bluer. So I would shift it over to a more warmer tone so that my prints would get that warmer tone. 
then now I'm just like completely leaving it up to the printer to do the translation. I don't do any adjustments on Photoshop anymore because I think that's where I get the most accurate print colors. It's been doing great. And I can show that in some other videos because I think we waste a lot of time and I've been there. I've done that a million times, like tweaking settings left and right and nothing seems to change. And then you finally get a good result, but then you have no idea how you did it and then you cannot replicate it. Or you do replicate the exact same things and get weird results again. And I think that happens when there is just too many variables going around and then the computer is translating things, but then the printer is also doing that. But anyways, I can show that later, but that's what I'm trying here. And these that I'm trying are Epson's Vi Epson Vivid, which is Epson's own calibration, and also Adobe RGB. And then within Adobe RGB, you have two options, which is 1.2 and 2.2 Gamma, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, let me check. It's gonna be the same old story of every computer is different, so you gotta try them out and see what's best for your own printer and computer communication. But it's something nice to try if you're having trouble with the whole print colors and things printing very differently from what you see on the computer, even though you are obviously trying the whole RGB, CMYK and simple uh, two weeks here and there and still don't get the results that you want which is very frustrating I'm also trying for the first time doing the outlines in Procreate, even though it was not hard doing it in Photoshop, but in Procreate it's just like, I think it's closer to you because when I'm using, when I'm using a drawing tablet or a Cintiq, usually I have the keyboard on the way and I know it's my fault, I, I could just move the keyboard away, but that's how I like to use it and it was not hard, but I feel like there is now I feel like there is literally a distance between me and what I'm drawing that it creates this um, feeling of being away from your drawing. It feels like very distant. Well, literally. <laughs> but anyways, on Procreate, it's so... It feels more real. That's what I think. Okay, now to be honest, listening to myself while I say this out loud, I, I sound like Mr. Obvious, Captain Obvious. Of course, if there is something on the way of your drawing, it's gonna feel more distant and then it's gonna feel less real and then it's gonna feel a little bit weird. But it took me the experience to actually understand that and so trying new things, that's, that's why it's good to try new things because sometimes it's just obvious but since you haven't tried it yet, you don't know how it feels. <laughs> it sounds so ridiculous, I'm sorry. But besides that, besides the feeling, uh, I think my Cricut was a lot happier with the with the outlines from Procreate. For some reason, it cut a lot faster. Maybe because the the brushes are crisper, and then it creates like an easier shape for Cricut to see and to scan and and understand. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna keep trying both. I'm also gonna try doing it in Photoshop with another brush instead of the usual stroke that I just put on my designs, the automatic one. By the way, I have another video that shows the exact process of my stickers, if you want to know more in depth how I go about it. This one is more like a quick rundown how I'm gonna think about my stickers from very beginning, from the very start to finish. 
but yeah, I enjoyed a lot using Procreate. I cannot believe I'm saying that because I've been such a Wacom and PC computer desktop user that I could not believe I would go for a tablet and just enjoy that so much more. Not more, but enjoy it so much. I didn't even believe it was possible for how much, how comfortable I was with a computer and a desktop. Now it's time to cut them. Also, I don't know why I'm not trying it yet, but I should be rounding the corners in, my, in Photoshop, like when I designed the sheets. I don't know why I'm not doing that. <laughs> but at least now I'm doing the whole cutting three times the background, so, so you could just separate the sheets from the rest of the paper. And then I'm also trying two different kinds of paper now, the matte ones that I usually do use. And also a glossy paper this time because I've been really, I've been really missing my colors and I don't think the matte paper represents it that well. Well, just for the nature of matte paper per se, but I've been missing really much those darker tones and the, the depth of the design showing up. And so for that reason, I'm probably going to switch to glossy paper. Or I'm going to do some designs on glossy paper and some others on matte paper, depending on what I really want from that. Because what I love from matte paper is that you can write on top of it. So for things like tiny memo pads, or I wouldn't be able to have that with glossy paper. So, but anyways, lots of thinking, lots of experimenting, lots of things to try and to check and to, I don't know, decide and go with. But that's how we all like it, right? <laughs> oh, and I used to have so many problems with the Cricut not reading the sensor marks. But after watching a few videos here on YouTube and on TikTok, I found out that you could just put a matte tape, an invisible tape, over the registration marks and that pretty much clears the whole problem with the Cricut reflecting back the light on the paper and not being able to read it. So try it out, it works perfectly. But I don't really like the fact that it uses so much tape. So I'm looking for alternatives, but for now, that's the best I've seen around. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I didn't go too much into cookies that make you crave them so much because I believe that's what I did to myself while editing this, but um, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'll see you on the next video then. Bye.